Hello, I'm Stan Copeland, the pastor of Lover's Lane United Methodist Church in Dallas, Texas. This new video series is entitled, Dear Bishop. Sometimes it may not be crystal clear who the bishop is that I'm addressing. Viewers can guess. And the bishops, I would remind you that old saying about the shoe, if it fits, wear it. So, dear bishop, it's finally South Central Jurisdictional Conference time, and we will elect and appoint bishops who love and will support unity, order, and a captivating vision for the United Methodist Church. It is especially hard to do this video because it's hard to address someone for whom I have had so much love and respect, and now I find myself so disappointed. I have known you for much of my ministry and have shared as both colleague and a friend. My disappointment comes from hearing you quoted by so many pastors who are pushing the Global Methodist Church. My heart sank when I saw you on a video criticizing the United Methodist Church, of which you are a bishop. I guess I first want to ask, why are you still a United Methodist bishop, if you believe like you do? Many of us love you very much, but we also love the UMC and know that power, especially from a bishop in our denomination, can damage, and it has. One of my friends who is a retired professor said about you, his father was a great educator and school administrator. He and his family have been given so much by the United Methodist Church, and now he criticizes the very church that made him and opened every door and welcomed him in. I have had you preach in our pulpit here at Lover's Lane, and I worked and prayed for you to be elected to the episcopacy. I have always loved to hear you preach and teach. But lately, the only messages I hear from you are destructive to the church. In fact, I dare say you have been one of the most damaging bishops in the connection since its inception. History will show that you and one or two others as those who hurt the United Methodist Church the most. I know it must be comfortable to think of living out your ministry in a large, affluent congregation that has left the United Methodist Church. And as a bishop, emeritus, or whatever your title will be, retirement with a bishop's pension must be comfortable. And I just hope you remember how you got it and who paid your salary for years. Remember, those who compensated you are every United Methodist in every church that pays apportionments, which you used to encourage every church to pay in full. The churches that I serve always pay, so I guess I have the right to ask, what have you done for the United Methodist Church unity, order, and well-being lately? Do you really think there will be many clergy or congregations of color making the switch to the GMC? Do you really think the GMC approach with harsher stances and more punitive measures for disobedience will be attractive to most in the younger generations, the millennials and Gen Z? How many churches that have disaffiliated with the United Methodist Church are served by clergy women? I think the answer is very, very few. The GMC is likely to have clergy that are older, whiter, largely male, and its congregations will be more homogenous regarding theology, socio-political agenda, and have policies and procedures that are far from welcoming to people who are LGBTQ. As a bishop and steeped in our United Methodist history, I know you are aware of the history of the Southern Methodist Church. This is the denomination that broke from the Methodist Episcopal Church South 
because they were against uniting with the Methodist Episcopal Church to form the Methodist Church in 1939. The Southern Methodist Church was formed because they strictly believed in segregation. They were extremely conservative theologically and added statements to their articles of religion concerning creationism, premillennialism, Satan, and racial segregation. Today, 83 years since their inception as a church against a group of people and making their doctrine narrower and more exclusionary, they're hanging on to 73 congregations from Virginia to Texas. Their total membership is 3,500 Southern Methodists. Our single congregation has more members than this entire denomination. I think your father would say, history is a good teacher. Learn from it. I love the Texas Annual Conference, of which you and I hold fond memories. I started going to Annual Conference when my parents took me at the age of eight years old. And you probably started going to Annual Conference at least by that age, since your father was such a prominent and beloved leader in the conference. I still remember him speaking and everyone leaning into what he was saying. I have to believe that some of those leaders of the past could have found a way to keep the church together. As an old-timer UMC pastor said recently to me, they don't make United Methodist bishops and church leaders like they used to. Maybe that's true. All I know is that we will need strong, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled bishops to help heal and rebuild what has been torn asunder and nowhere more than the Texas Annual Conference. When disaffiliation has done its damage on the UMC and the Texas Annual Conference specifically, you can take much of the credit. The way your words have been used as leverage to leave for many help do much harm. It hurts to say, but I do believe that you and a few other bishops in our denomination and one in your neighborhood should do the right thing and step down as a United Methodist bishop. You've served well and faithfully until recently. Follow your convictions, but leave the United Methodist Church and pray for us as we work through our challenges on our own. And you can take it to the bank. The United Methodists will work through these challenges and we'll come out of this stronger. Even bishops can subscribe to my funny named YouTube channel, Picklin Parson. Thanks for subscribing. Also, I hope many are planning to come to Lover's Lane United Methodist Church on November the 16th, all day, no cost, to the Space at the Table Conference and Conversations of Hope for the Future of the UMC. You can sign up today. Thank you.